Hey kids, today we're going to be reviewing both text evidence and making connections between two texts. We are looking at these together because they both involve looking back into the text, whether it's one story or two stories, to find answers that are right there in the story. Many questions have answers right in the text. Some questions will tell you what paragraph, line, or stanza if it's a poem to look in. Other questions will ask generally about the entire text. And then some questions will ask what section can you find certain information in. If there are headings and that divide the text into different sections, they might ask you where you could find some specific information. What heading would be the best place to start. So for the success in these questions, you need to be reading carefully, underlining or highlighting, and taking notes so you know exactly where to find things. If you read quickly and you skim things over and you're not actually retaining the information in the passage, you're going to have a hard time going back and locating it. If you read carefully, then when you get to the question, you're going to know exactly where to look for the answer because the question will be familiar to you. So let's practice looking back in the text. In the popular story and song about a special reindeer, Rudolph was born with a glowing red nose. Because of this, all of Santa's other reindeer made fun of him. He was also left out of group games. One Christmas Eve, a visit from Santa changed everything. Since the winter weather was really bad, Santa asked Rudolph to lead the sleigh with his bright nose. Rudolph has been in front ever since. So according to the text, why was Rudolph excluded from playing with the other reindeer? So if we look here, it says he was also left out of group games. Okay, well, that's, that's what being excluded means. He was left out. So now I want to know why was he left out? So I'm going to look at the sentences around this. It says Rudolph was born with a glowing red nose. Because of this, all of Santa's other reindeer made fun of him. He was also left out of group games. Oh, okay. So because he had a glowing red nose, they teased him about it and they left him out. They excluded him. So there's my answer right there. One thing you need to note is because you are fifth graders and you're expected to know a little more vocabulary than you used to in second and third grade, they're not always going to give you the exact same words in the question as are used in the story. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. So over here in the question, they use the word excluded. And over here in the passage, they use the words left out. Left out and excluded mean the same thing. And you need to know that in order to know where to look in the passage. Let's try another one. This text says, building a snowman is a fun winter activity. First, pack enough snow to make two large snowballs. One snowball should be a little smaller than the other. Stack the smaller one on top for the snowman's head. Then place two lumps of coal for the eyes, a carrot for a nose, and some sticks for arms on the top snowball. Last, put an old hat on top of its head and an old scarf around its neck. My question says, according to the text, according to the text means your answer is in the text. So we need to go back and look at it. What should you do before putting coal lumps on for the eyes of the snowman? Can you find it? Okay, good. So right here it says, place two lumps of coal for the eyes. And this says before. So I'm going to backtrack and go to the sentence before it. Stack the smaller one on top for the snowman's head. Then place two lumps of coal for the eyes. So the thing that I do before putting coal for eyes is putting the smaller snowball on top to make the snowman's head.
Okay, let's look at the story about caribou, also known as reindeer. According to the text, which of the following would reindeer most likely eat? Let's look at the story. Caribou are also known as reindeer. They are mammals that live in northern climates, such as Alaska, Canada, and Greenland. They're plant eaters, or herbivores. Moss and grass are favorite foods. One interesting characteristic of reindeer is that their antlers are like human fingerprints. No two sets of reindeer antlers are exactly alike. Okay, so I need to find which of the following would reindeer most likely eat? What do you think? Okay, good. If I go back in the story, I can see that they are plant eaters or herbivores. Moss and grass are favorite foods. So I know that the answer I choose must be a plant. Okay, now we're going to move on to making connections between texts. This is where we read two texts informational or fiction, whatever, two stories, and we look back in both texts to make connections and see is what's similar and what is different between the two texts. Sometimes we have paired passages. This is two stories to read that have something in common. They might be about the exact same topic. They might be about different topics, but somehow be related. Questions will ask us to find things that are similar and different in the two passages. We can connect this to a Venn diagram, and we can even make a Venn diagram in our notes to help us see the similarities and differences in two passages as we read it. That's a strategy we could use. We could make a Venn diagram and fill it out as we're comparing the two stories. Let's look at these two stories. One is about caribou, and the other is about snowflakes. Caribou's an animal, and snowflakes are precipitation that falls from the sky. Those two things seem pretty different, but I bet there's something similar that ties these passages together also. My question says, how are caribou like snowflakes? First, let's read about caribou. Caribou are also known as reindeer. They are mammals that live in northern climates, such as Alaska, Canada, and Greenland. They are plant eaters or herbivores. Moss and grass are favorite foods. One interesting characteristic of reindeer is that their antlers are like human fingerprints. No two sets of reindeer antlers are exactly alike. Okay, now let's read about snowflakes. No two snowflakes are exactly alike. Snowflakes form in clouds, and their different journeys to the ground affect their shape and size, giving each snowflake its own unique identity. Very cold clouds contain water droplets and ice crystals. As water droplets attach themselves to ice crystals, they freeze, creating an even larger ice crystal. When this happens, water molecules line up and form a six-sided shape called a hexagon. This is why all snowflakes are six-sided. The shape of the ice crystal is determined by the temperature of the cloud. The amount of moisture in the cloud determines the size of the ice crystal. Likewise, the more moisture there is in a cloud, the bigger of ice crystal will be. When several ice crystals join together, they form a snowflake. As snowflakes tumble through the air, whirling and spinning, they each take a different path to the ground. As each snowflake falls, it drifts through clouds with different temperatures and moisture levels, which shapes each snowflake in a unique way. So, did you notice anything similar between these two passages? I can easily notice things that are different. Caribou are an animal and snowflake is a precipitation. Well, caribou live in the cold and snowflakes form in places where it's cold. But I noticed something else that's almost like a theme between the, of these two stories that is similar. 
This says here, no two sets of reindeer antlers are exactly alike. And up here on snowflakes, no two snowflakes are exactly alike. So how are caribou like snowflakes? Caribou's antlers are each unique like a set of human fingerprints and snowflakes are each unique. No two are exactly alike. Now let's look, what is a difference between the two articles? There are lots of differences. Okay, let's try this one. Christmas carols, Jingle Bells, and Rudolph. Now, both of these stories are a lot more similar than the last two. They're both about songs we sing at Christmas, but you're looking at, at a difference between the two articles. So let's read Christmas carols first. Christmas carols began in Europe thousands of years ago. They began as typical songs and soon became Christian songs commonly sung at Christmas time. Today, people gather together and sing Christmas carols in their neighborhoods, schools, nursing homes, or shopping malls. Singing Christmas carols is one of the oldest Christmas traditions we still celebrate today. Okay, Jingle Bells and Rudolph. Both Jingle Bells and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer are huge holiday hits. Neither one started out as a Christmas tune. Jingle Bells was a fun song about sleigh races in the snow. Christmas was not even mentioned in the lyrics. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was a Christmas story and coloring book for a store. Many years later, it was turned into a song and cartoon. What's the difference between these? Now let's look at these two, two stories again. How are the main ideas of these two articles similar? Similar means alike or the same. Great job. Thank you for reviewing text evidence and making connections.